Not one of them big bubble lip niggas said thank you. Not one of them big bubble lip nappy headed goddamn moon cricket said thank you. To the glider man that got him out of the elevator. We was drunk, stuck in the elevator for 30 minutes. I thought it was over. I didn't realize it was so many people till the elevator closed. But this video is a microcosm. Black people pick and choose. Black people hunt for racism. Black people overlook a thousand incidents like this where fucking gliders are facilitating or fucking saving their asses or fucking just fucking giving them grace, whatever. And they pick out one fucking incident that's not even racism, but that they can fucking use the fucking extort gliders, man. You wouldn't have no fucking elevator if it wasn't for fucking gliders. Everything would be one story. You'd be living in a fucking hut. Fuck you need an elevator for in a fucking mud hut. Did you ever say, I read somewhere where you said you have never met any good white people? Um, I said in the beginning of my slavery video that I hadn't met any good white people. And my definition of good is that you understand that this is a question of power, that you'll be willing to give up some power, that you'll be willing to give up some resources, that you'll be willing to pay black people reparations for our, hunt, our years and years of service in this country. Uh, that you'd be willing to go home and tell your white mother and father about white racism and how it affects and kills black people in our communities. That's my definition of good white people, and I haven't met any like that. Damn, you got all these white people bending over backwards, kissing black folk ass, only for one some goddamn mammy to open her mouth and say this. Mm. Mm. She's never met a good white person. She's never met a good white person. That Speaking of power, how about empowerment? One of the criticisms that the mainstream community has of us is that we are lacking in family values. Right. We are children having children and men running the streets. Right. What do you say to that? Well, I think that the economic system in this country and the justice system in this country contributes to the delinquency and the destruction of the African family. I think that <laughs> there would be no justice system. It'd be just the chief. The chief would be like, yo, most of these disputes would get handled between the people. And if it was something that rose to the level of the chief, the chief would make his decision and that would be it. You wouldn't have no fucking lawyer, no public defender, no right to a speedy trial, no judge, no judge by the a, a jury of your peers. It would be like, yo, you guilty and you'd be dead in 10 minutes. If the chief rendered his
judgment that you was guilty, you'd be dead in 10 minutes. What is this fucking man we talking about? The fact that 25% of the black male population is either in prison or um, under court supervision shows you that. It shows you that niggas be doing exactly what they rap about. It shows you that when you talk to a group of niggas, that exactly this, the type of conversation that comes out of their mouth, the things they talk about doing, they're actually telling the truth. That a lot of children will not have fathers. I think the fact that the economic system does not embrace uh, or allow African men to have a substantial position in it is the reason why you have so many people committing crimes. So I think it's just hypocritical. Yeah, Pookie gonna carjack you and drive around, joyride around town because of whatever the fuck you just said. Cool. And some type of trickery for white people and the government and the media to say. Did you ever say, I read somewhere where you said you have never met any good white people? Um, I said in the beginning of my slavery video that I hadn't met any good white people. And my definition of good is that you understand that this is a question of power, that you'd be willing to give up some power, that you'd be willing to give up some resources, that you'd be willing to pay black people reparations for our hunt, our years and years of service in this country, uh, that you'd be willing to go home and... This is in the 80s. They was pushing that reparation shit back then. Salute the Lord Bailey. Sun Solutions, uh, no. The Earth is flat and Aka's a truth. <laughs> Yeah, man. Salute to you, Laura Bailey. And tell your white mother and father about white racism and how it affects and kills black people in our communities. That's my definition of good white people, and I haven't met any like that. Speaking of power, how about empowerment? One of the criticisms that the mainstream community has of us is that we are lacking in family values. Right. We are children having children and men running the streets. Right. What do you say to that? Well, I think that the economic system in this country and the justice system in this country contributes to the delinquency and the destruction of the African family. I think the fact that 25 percent of the black male population is either in prison or um, under court supervision shows you that a lot of children will not have fathers. I think the fact that the economic system does not embrace uh, or allow African men to have a substantial position in it is the reason why you have so many people committing crimes. So I think it's just hypocritical and some type of trickery for white people and the government and the media to say. Did you ever say, I read somewhere where you said you have never met any good white <laughs> Yo, this girl went to this girl went to this girl went to Cornell. Did y'all know that? This girl went to fucking Cornell. This girl went to Cornell. She's from the Bronx and she went to Cornell. If if the white man would have left us alone in Africa, she would have went to the University of Pounding Yams. Pounding Yam University. And she'd have fucking biceps like Hulk Hogan. And her nipples would be touching the fucking ground.
But here she goes. She live in this fucking great country and she get to go to fucking Cornell. She went to fucking Cornell. She traveled widely, visiting Britain, France, Portugal, Finland, and Russia. This is all in college. Wow. And she's never met a good white person. Let's let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Because racism is real. Mm -hmm. But in order for us to, to make the next step with racism, we got to do right by ourselves mm -hmm. first. But, hold on, but the thing about that. Look at these two goddamn jigaboos, man. <laughs> these, salute the Slim 74s. Slavery is the only victory that some man has. Listen to these two goddamn jigaboos, man. <laughs> He's too goddamn. One is an ex football player and one is an ex rapper. They done dressed up in the goddamn. They done dressed up in some clothes and put on some top hats and now they think they're all sophisticated. Listen to this babble. Listen to this goddamn sun gibberish. <laughs> Listen to this sun gibberish they about to talk, man. And I hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. That's easy to say for somebody who has been illuminated and mm -hmm. understand. But we got to understand if you read Franz Fanon's Black Skin, White Mask, most black people look at themselves through the eyes of white people. So we treat ourselves like we like the people who we want to be like. Yeah. The way that we wear our hair. That's the reason why it's so important. The statement that you made. We are, you have to be unapologetically African. Yeah. And if you don't love yourself and you don't like the way that you look, how how you think you're going to treat other people? Because if you don't like being black in the first place. Jesus Christ. IQ is real, man. If, if you don't think that IQ is real, listen to this conversation. Man. Right. You're not going to shop with black folks. Let's, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Because racism is real. Mm -hmm. But in order for us to, to make the next step with racism, we got to do right by ourselves mm -hmm. first. But, hold on, but the thing about that, I hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. That's easy to say for somebody who has been illuminated and mm -hmm. understand. But we got to understand, if you read Franz Fanon's Black Skin, White Mask, most black people look at themselves through the eyes of white people. So we treat ourselves like we like the people who we want to be like yeah. the way that we wear our hair. That's the reason why it's so important. The statement that you made, we are, you have to be unapologetically African. Yeah. And if you don't love yourself and you don't like the way that you look, how how you think you're going to treat other people? Because if you don't like being black in the first place, right. you're not going to shop with black. Folks. Let's, let's be. God. Damn, these some fucking low IQ sun words, man. Salute to shut up, I can cook, man. Long time no see, man. Salute to shut up, I can cook, man, in the building, man. Oh, God. Sun words are so fucking aggravating. Research, research. Sun words are so goddamn aggravating, man. Fuck. 